Welcome to another episode of the Unbound Book Babes. Today, we welcome the queen of writing despair and hopelessness. Hurting our feelings with every turn of the page, she brought the crushing story of Petra Gainery and hooked us with Petra's fierce and sometimes feral resolve to persevere in the face of all odds and uncovered truths. We welcome author Lord and Leisure. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> yes. And did I say Petra's last name right? Yes. Yes, you did. Yeah, Gainery. Perfect. Because you have, Lauren has a really great uh, website with a pronunciation guide for her series. And so I was so excited when I was like prepping for this episode. I was like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. I love when authors do that. So thank you. Because now I feel super confident. I wanted to double check, but now I feel super confident that I'm going to get these things right in this conversation. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, that actually, that originated from um, Throne of Glass when my friends and I were having a conversation and uh, I heard I heard Kale from the audiobook and um, my friend would only refer to him as K. Cole Cal because she never knew what to say. So I was like, you know what? I feel like I should have a pronunciation guy. That is awesome. Um, any fans of ours here uh, will know that Kristen and I oftentimes just make up things and go <laughs> with it. Yeah. <laughs> Still, so, okay. I mean, even though I have the pronunciation guide, I feel like a lot of people call like just make up their own things because that's the nature of fantasy. That's fine if you want to call Ludovicus Ludacris, you're not. <laughs> yep, that's awesome. Can you say his name again, real slow for me. Ludovicus. Ludovicus. Yeah, Ludovicus. But uh, honestly, like I, I get, I hear, uh, I hear Ludo or Luvoticus, and I hear Ludacris, like a good amount and that's just that's fine with me because that's what I do with other fantasy books and make up my own own name so fantasy authors they're just like us (laughs) (laughs) that's so nice to know because sometimes as a reader you feel like you really fall in love with a story and you want to do it the justice that it deserves but like something as small as a name could really throw throw the whole situation off so um, yeah, and what's funny is that like, but with like between writing the name out, like this happened a, a, a couple times in this sort of things, and I like learned my lesson moving on to the bones of benevolence. But I would write out a, a name, and it looked so good on paper, and then I would never say it out loud until like I was telling my friend about it or I was doing a podcast interview, and I realized that was the first time I ever actually had said the name out loud. I'm like, oh, it doesn't actually sound as good as I like it looks on paper, like. Covris, I like Covris now, but I feel like Covris looks so much cooler on paper than it sounds out loud. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, you have so many characters and so many places in your story. Like, to come up with all these names is is crazy. Um, we're going to dive a bit more into that a little later on in the episode, actually, because uh, we want to kind of hear your process around that. So... When did you start writing? Because I know that, like, in your bio on your website, you just, like, had this idea one day and started. So when did you actually start writing? Oh, I mean, I've always really liked to write. Overall, I've always just, like, creating anything. And so it kind of was just, like, a natural intention to create this, like, fantasy world. So I started writing The Sin of Saints in November of 2021. Um, At that point, I did not foresee anything coming of it i i told my husband i was like you know book and then if it gets published and great if not i'm just friend so i can have it on my bookshelf i wrote that um so writing this kind of thing yeah I don't, that one only took me like two two and a half minutes. um and then kind of everything just exploded from exploded from there and um but yeah so the the series technically was was born and yeah no about november or october november 2021 so you wrote the sin of saints in like two months yes and i feel like i'm paying for that now because i did not i'm i'm very happy with the direction that the story you know is going but i like like i said i was i did not first see publishing it so when i was i was just writing all these things like this sounds cool this would be awesome and then i had to kind of like circle back and realize oh i have to like tie up all these all these ends so it's a lot easier to write a book when you don't think that you're 
going to be doing anything with it or writing a second or a third or, you know. So, yeah. So the Sin of Saints, I kind of just like banged it out in, in two months and it's been a whirlwind ever since. <laughs> well, it turned out wonderful. I'm so happy that you spent those two months just doing your thing. <laughs> Thank you. I am too. Now I'm, yes. I Now I look back and I'm like, wow, I had no, I had no idea that like that was going to turn into this. I just thought I was like just channeling from creative energy into Google Doc. <laughs> and are these characters that like lived with you for a long time that you had this idea for a long time or was it just no, like... not really um i think and it's it's been very interesting kind of getting to know the characters as the story unfolds um and that's something i'm gonna try to do i think a little bit differently in, in my next series not because i don't think it was a good idea but just because i you know want to try something different but um petra i feel like parts of petra had lived in me yes there are a lot of parts of Petra that I feel like are extensions of myself or where I'm like wow I wish I could be more like this in real life um I don't say like oh yes I am Petra you know and she is me but um so I think I, I will say that parts of Petra definitely like I have I had within me the whole time and I didn't know it um but as for everybody else they kind of like I know it sounds insane to say but like they they really kind of wrote themselves like I you know I came up with the initial concept for the characters and then after that they just like showed me who they were throughout the story um and yeah that was kind of a spontaneous thing <laughs> yeah that's amazing <laughs> just kind of <laughs> thank you <laughs> very proud of us here in my brain <laughs> last one off <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you for writing such a dark and damaging story. I feel <laughs> just a little more traumatized. <laughs> hey, do listen to it because I, uh, I'm, you know, in the process. I guess I haven't announced announced that yet, so I can kind of announce it now. Uh, it's not like a huge secret, but I'm in the process of I'm in the body of book produced, um, and so now you know I'm listening back to my chapters again, and I'm like, this is so brutal, and for what? And I'm I'm happy it is, but I'm like, I don't remember writing like, like. Where did this, where did all this come from? Um, and <laughs> I just, cause like, and especially like looking back at that point in my life, like I had this job I loved and life was like good. And you know, or it's just me and my husband going out on cute little dates. And then I'm coming home and like writing the most brutal, like screwed up thing. Um, but yeah. So there's actually two things that I want to I want to touch on because you have in like your stories kind of like pulled your following for some assistance on the audiobook process. And I remember one of them specifically uh, was the accents. What accent do you think that these characters would have? That was really fun to one, see what everyone else thought. And then also just like contribute, uh, cause I did, I did the poll. I like to contribute thoughts as well. That was really fun. And I was really excited that you did that. So uh, cool. I hope it's going well. Uh, I can't wait for it. Cause I, I love audiobooks and at, my favorite thing to do is to like read the physical book and then anytime I'm gonna reread it I actually prefer to do the audiobook the second time um one it also corrects me saying names <laughs> and then two um it just helps the process because typically like another book's coming out and I'm trying to get through it quickly so I can get into that third book and remember everything so I'm very excited and I look forward to uh, also consuming uh, the series through that medium. It's going to be, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, my, my narrator for Petra is, her name is Megan Kirby and I heard her voice and I was like, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh. Like the second I heard her audition, I was like, it's you, like you, you are her. She is, you, this is, this is perfect. So she, she is just killing it every chapter I get her. Like, I love so, that. Um, yeah. That is awesome. So you also mentioned the second thing, um, you you're hearing this back now and you're wondering because like one of our questions was uh when and how did you just come up with such a devastating story so again like and i said this on a couple of podcasts like a couple of interviews here and there where like i i really don't know like i i in so many ways this story really wrote itself and i think obviously there was some something there where i was like 
it killing it came from somewhere but like there's not like i don't i don't have i'm not like necessarily pulling from something in real life i think i i i guess i assume i'm probably subconsciously pulling from like i really liked game of thrones you know i i am into a lot of like other you know fantasy media and stuff so i'm sure that there's influence from from there um and I don't even really know if it was like a conscious effort for me to be like, what is the most devastating thing that I can think of? Like what would absolutely just ruin? Um, it kind of like I kind of set up the world and the world just in doing that, the world kind of revealed itself to be very brutal. And the story just kind of, yeah, un- unfolded itself um, to me. I wish I had some like great creative. Yeah, I knew that if I did this, I could do that and, and this and that. No, it just kind of. You know, I, I designed Asserine in my head and things happened for her. Well, again, it's been great so far. For the so <laughs> thank you. Too. Thank you. <laughs> Are any of your characters modeled after real people you know or have met? Obviously you don't need to say their names if it's real people, but um and is it therapeutic modeling your characters after people you know or people you've met? So there aren't really any, there's not like a one person in my life where I was like, I'm going to make you. Um, and it wasn't a conscious effort to make, um, at least, you know, the good parts of Cal, like my husband, but there are a lot of like of the good parts of Cal where I'm like, oh, okay. Like I see where I got, I got that from my husband who's, you know, fantastic human being. Um, but other than that, the only, this is one of my favorite stories. So when I had started writing this, um, one of my good friends, her boyfriend was uh, was basically like burned in like a Craigslist exchange. Like he was supposed to be buying drinks from this guy Craigslist. The guy screwed him over really bad, and we were they were going through that. And I did write him into the story. So the guy, his name is Ethan Hawk. He's a tiny character. Um, when they're passing through the Onyx Pass, and uh, he is kind of trying to pe- trying to move in on Petra, and he meets. He meets a brutal end with uh, an arrow in his neck um, that was based on this person just more so. I threw that in for my friend because she was going through this thing. And the Craigslist deal was for like a like a archery, like a hunting bow. Oh my gosh. So that wasn't his name. Of course, I changed his name. I don't even remember. I, I don't even know if I knew his whole name. But I was like, so that's like the one cameo that's like based on an actual <laughs> human being. And, like, maybe I should, like, talk to a therapist about that. The fact that, like, <laughs> he died such a brutal death. Like, I, but, uh, but no, no, there's, there's, like I say, like, there's some, there's some traits here and there, um, or some things that, like, characters will say that I've subconsciously kind of pulled from, from real life. But, um, I wish I could say that, yeah, the villain's this person, the hero's this <laughs> No, there are all up here. It's an even more incredible story that it's just one <laughs> random guy off of Craigslist. <laughs> Took we got vengeance on him. <laughs> exactly. You're gonna burn my friend. You're gonna die in this book. <laughs> so anybody on Craigslist selling something, you better watch out. You might uh, yeah. might get written about. <laughs> you think you might? You just might. <laughs> Yeah, Kristen and I actually had a conversation last night when we were uh, chatting and prepping for the episode about how it would be fun to be a fantasy author because if there was some instance in our life with somebody that we just didn't care for, we could just kill them off or make something terrible happen to them as this like character in a book where it's like, it's kind of like, you know, venting in a way that is a lot safer than an actual confrontation with the, the person in real life. So, exactly. <laughs> yeah but the thing, like for me like i genuinely like i don't for as dark and brutal as this is and how terribly some of these characters are i like i i i don't i don't harbor strong feelings like i can't really think of a single person that i genuinely hate enough to like do that like i you know of course there's people that i dislike or don't get along with but like I feel like overall like i just don't have strong enough feelings about somebody to do that i don't know maybe i will maybe i will one day but I also very much think of my characters as like their own people. Like I don't equate my characters, even if they have like similarities to somebody that I, that I know, I don't really equate them to like a real person in real life that I know. Like they're their own kind of 
thing own kind of sep- like separate thing so it's like even if i were to kill them off i'm not actually if i like if i were to base it off of somebody and i were to kill that character off i you know it doesn't it doesn't take like as much anger out as i as i thought it might you know um before i started writing so yeah good good perspective because being a new author what was one of the hardest things to like learn and adapt to so navigating the publishing process and i always thought that like traditional publishing you know getting picked up by some big publisher um was like the end all be all i always thought that was like the ultimate goal until i started looking into it and i was like huh you know it really isn't always the the best option it always it doesn't it isn't always like you know the ultimate prize um and so going into this, you know, I originally was like, yeah, you know, I want to get, I do want to get traditionally published. And I, I did reach out to a couple agents um, and I ended up pulling my queries pretty quickly when I, when I realized I wanted to self-publish. So, um, and I'm so incredibly happy that I did because, you know, retaining the, the creativity, retaining my ideas, um, but pivoting from, I'm going to get a publishing deal to, holy beep, I have to do everything i have to do everything myself or you know hire somebody to do it that was really like a like a trip um and you know i'm, I'm on my third third go around and there are some things i'm like oh i remember this got this piece of cake other times there are other things i'm like sitting with three google tabs open trying to like piece it all together um yeah 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 um are there any tools that you would actually recommend to aspiring authors to aid in the writing process so I'm big on Google Docs. That's like my that's like my holy grail, which apparently I just heard is not actually you're not supposed to do that. Um, so, but I I don't know. I'm I'm like Google Google Docs till I die. Um, and Etsy. So Etsy was where I found my cover designer. Um, I always thought that basically um, there's another there's another site called Reezy that. Mm-hmm a lot of people that I know had used to find cover designers and editors and everything. And I, it was just, it was so expensive. And at that point in my career, I was, I didn't have a career. So I was like, you know, starting out. Um, and Etsy is where I found my cover designer. And I like, I swear by it. So that's what I tell everybody. I was like, you are, especially if you're just starting out, you don't have a massive budget of thousands of dollars to spend on the cover. Look on Etsy. Cause there's some really, really incredible artists. Um, who will, you know, do custom work, who will do, they have pre-made, um, that's like my, my, that's, yeah, Google Docs, my holy grail, Etsy's my holy grail. That's great, yeah, I was actually looking at Etsy the other day, I came across something on Etsy, kind of on accident, like, there's, like, people on Etsy who do everything, like, you, you're mentioning, like, book cover design, um, in, like, but there's also like brand kits. So if you're like a new writer and you're also branding yourself, you could go on there and you can get color palettes, fonts, uh, little shapes and designs that all like really go together. And then they have, they do such a good job of promoting it too. Cause they'll like show you the brand kit. And then they'll also show you like a mood board associated with the, it's, it's a wonderful space for creators still. Um, I know that like, like there's been a lot with Etsy about like, the AI takeover. I mean, that's a very big conversation happening in the world in general, but um, there are still real people on there. So don't forget about Etsy because there's real good creators on there that are offering a lot of other type of digital products that are created by a person. So don't forget about them. I agree with you. You usually tell. I mean, if you like, if you start looking, at least at this point, because AI is now so ingrained into like everything I see on social media, whether it's like, oh, look at this. And you're like, oh, no, that's AI. Or somebody posting about, oh, no, don't do, you know, don't do AI. This is AI. Um, I feel like at least on my end of like Etsy where I'm looking in the things that I'm purchasing or, or getting inspiration from or whatever, it, 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 there's not as, as much AI on that side. But there, mm-hmm. any, anything, anything with art, anything with art is going to be, you know, it's going to be there. Yeah. Yep. Um. So speaking of social media, I mean, obviously you're self-published, so you probably spend a lot of time marketing yourself on social media. Being an author means being an influencer. Um, You're so close to all of your readers, you know. Um, 
Have you gotten any like weird or strange DMs or bizarre interactions since you are so appro like reachable by your audience? Honestly, no. Um, I mean, I'm sure they're here and there. Nothing really sticks out uh, too much, which is really nice. Um, and I feel like ha most of that, honestly, is because this space is overwhelmingly women, you know, so it's like there's not as much of that like overlap um what's funny is before i feel like it's a thousand lifetimes ago before i was an author i was this is weird to say out loud i was technically i was a tiktok influencer for laundry don't know how that happened i like went started going viral and then just like had their go with it um literally have no idea how it happened but i there were a lot of weird weird things there so it's been really nice to be in this it's it overall is like very very um very supportive i i honestly can't really think of any weird dms i've i've gotten i get a lot of i do get a lot of like oh here pay me and i'll review review your book um and i'm like no oh, it's okay thank you um but yeah no other than that it's it's like kind of like a head trip to think about i'm like this is actually very supportive good and <laughs> overall that's amazing. You know, like when you're creating an online space, you know, that's what you want, right? You want to create a space that is fun and interactive and mm -hmm. you don't get a lot of those unhinged, unwanted yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there are, like I said, like there's nothing super sticks out. I mean, I can think of a couple where, uh, you know, people are will ask like, yeah, like invasive, more invasive questions about like, I did actually, you know what? Now I think about it, I did have one person ask me, they're like, oh, where, where in your house do you write? Not like asking about like specifically, like, where, what's your writing space look like? Like, they were like, where in your house do you write? I was like, why do you want to know? Um, that's I don't remember. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I sit on the bathroom floor and I write. I actually sit under the bathroom cabinet where I get my impression. So, uh, yeah, that is the one now that you bring that up. I, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, that's good. It's I was hoping for a really juicy story, but it's good that you're. I can see a juicy story <laughs> from like be before, before, or like even before then. Like when I right around the time I met my husband, and I was like 22, and I was like just I was I was a social butterfly. All this like I was always out. I was always doing things, and then this is before any of the book stuff. Then I got a lot of weird, strange random men in the dms mostly men just asking the most unhinged things saying the most unhinged things um when it comes to the world no and very then then very tame <laughs> good very happy to hear that so kind of thinking about your writing process your books are incredibly emotional and it's a sign of a really great author to make a reader feel everything that the character feels and chris and i were having a conversation um she actually called me out she's like did you recommend this book to make me cry as <laughs> to traumatize me <laughs> because we both and like i'm a crier so i'm not surprised but I, kristen is not a crier and we were both like we found ourselves crying so many times throughout these books how do you set the mood or get into the mindset to write these emotional scenes? Like, is there anything that you do to kind of prepare for that? And I know you mentioned um, it all just kind of came out for the sin of saints, but how and how has that like evolved uh, into now the next books that you've been writing? So the process for the sin of saints versus T Bob, and then even even different from the mask was they were all very different so p sauce i you know i my husband and i were still kind of newlyweds i was working i was uh, working a job that i really loved and we didn't have our son yet and so it was very easy like on my days off i could just sit there and for hours um you know write and there wasn't necessarily anything i did to get into the mindset but once i got into the mindset it was very easy to stay there um as long as you know there was because there were no outside distractions um i published or i you know i i found out i was pregnant and then three days later i published the sin of saints so the writing process for the bones of benevolence was very different because i had a very very difficult pregnancy i've talked about that a couple times before um 
where there were a couple times where I was like, you know what, I'm just going to pull my book, delete my social media and like fade into obscurity because I just couldn't do it. So that one was, it was interesting because I was in a very, it was a very strange place in life because I was so thrilled to be pregnant, but I was so sick. Like my whole, my whole life changed. And so that's like thinking about it, like that's more of the mindset that I probably should have been in while I was writing this stuff. Um, but I wasn't really writing it at all. Um, and then come my son being born and everything. Now it's very different because I, it takes, it does take me a little bit of time to get into like that mindset of writing these very, you know, emotional things. And I do tend to feel a lot of the things that I write. Um, like I can't just, you know, go from a conversation to, with my friend and then sit down and write some terrible, awful emotional death scene. Um, so now the process is uh, my mother-in-law who's literally an angel sent from above um will you know have my son for usually usually it's the day or a couple couple solid hours and i'll have to kind of okay get myself i have to write i need to do this i get to do this um and then i'm kind of more able to slide into that but it is definitely a lot more difficult now um and i do look at things differently now that i have my son because i'm like i'm just writing these off things and like these things exist in the world, but there's also now this, you know, this perfect little ball of love that I'm like, how, how, how do both of these things come from me? Um, I don't understand. Uh, but yeah, before it was very easy to kind of slide into that mindset. There were a few distractions. Now I really do do make, make an effort. Once I'm there, I'm there and I, I can stay there. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird, kind of a weird it's almost, it's almost like a lens kind of goes over my my eyes and it's I see things a little bit differently in that state yeah we were curious how you're navigating you know so much joy in your life and then the stories <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny though is that the stories like do bring me like being able to write and and is like as awful as the things are the you know some of these things that I'm writing are and as emotional as they are it's still the process and being able to create like that does bring me so much joy. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of it plays into, you know, I've struggled with mental health, just like literally every single other person ever, because the world's really hard right now. Um, and I think probably, you know, I'm sure that does play into it sometimes is getting into, into that mindset. Um, but navigating it, honestly, like it's, it's, it just it just kind of happens like I don't really think it's even something that I need to consciously like um do overall it does take a little bit of effort to get into that but like it just it just is what it is like it was kind of like a cooler answer no I think it's I think it's great so I know we've said this over and over on repeat that um these books are dark and you know we as the readers really go through it with the characters and everything that we're what's going on um how do like your friends and your family, um, how do they feel about your work and the intensity of it? Like of the final part? So I think um my so my husband, when he, you know, when I first started writing, I was like, I'm writing a book. And he's like, okay, this is gonna be like, you know, when you learned how to knit and you learned how to make clay earrings and like you're really obsessed with it for a little bit and then you like gave it up. Um and then That's he, really he relatable, the by the way. Yes. <laughs> I am listening. I, if I had not, like, found success here, I would have been six hobbies deep already. Like, I would have, <laughs> like, I've always liked to write, but I would have probably, like, moved on to other things. Um, I'm glad that I, I'm, I'm glad because I really do love this. Um, but he was the first one to write this, or to read it, and um, there were a couple times where I would, like, I'd, like, be looking over his shoulder to see what part he's at, and I'd be watching his face, and he's, like, what and so there were a couple of questions of him saying like you know like where did where you come up with this uh are you okay <laughs> um like are we okay is everything all right or anything we need to talk about um and but overall i really have not had too many comments about like the the darkness in terms of like asking if i'm okay or where that came from it's more of um you know, I've had, I've had so much support, so much support. Um, but 
yeah, there hasn't really been too too much questioning in in the way of that. But I do have like like one of my very best friends, um, Ashley. She's she's my like my she and I are big huge fantasy, you know, everything fantasy we love. Um, and she has been you know, she she picked it apart the way she picked apart Akatar thing. Does this mean this? Does that mean that? Like, oh, what is this? And what's that going to end up being? Um, so yeah, that's really great. That's that, fantastic. Yeah, you know, it's it's always shocking. At least it was shocking for Bobby and I. You know, when we started this podcast, the amount of people that truly did come out and support us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and a lot of unexpected people. I mean, you may not yeah. know all of your supporters since they're buying the book, um, and you're not like maybe not seeing them read, but. You know, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, definitely like seeing, uh, seeing people that you know I went to school, like high school with that I haven't talked to in you know 10 years. And and I had one, um, ex boyfriend like reach out, and he's like, Hey, like, I, I'm really, I'm really happy for you. Like, I wish I'll let you know, for, like, I bought your book and blah blah, blah. like, great guy, you know, just went our separate ways. But I was like, it is, it is pretty crazy to like see how, how far the reach has gotten just in my, you know, circle of, of people that I know, yeah. 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 The strangest of people are are supporting us. And it's. Yeah. Yeah. It's shocking. And yeah. thank you. I think yes. most of us would like to just thank you to everybody that. Yeah. For real. Supported us. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any favorite characters or like. I, I don't I don't think I don't not sure. Maybe favorite character is least favorite character from your books. So, so I actually just pulled my husband last night. So there's a character in Unmasked that I, you know haven't really met yet, obviously, but that is, I think, my favorite character I've ever had the pleasure of writing. She is her name's Neve. Um, she is just basically never doesn't have any filter. Like then everything she's thinking, she has a bad attitude, and she's not afraid to use it. Like she is genuinely my favorite person I've ever written. Um, but I know this probably sounds cliche, but also just Petra and like watching Petra because I didn't, like I said, I didn't know where this was going when I started like watching Petra grow throughout this process, like watching her go from this just like destitute, everything's terrible, my life is awful, I'm just doing what I have to to survive to sort of seeing the light and finding, you know, finding some happiness even among all of like the darkness. Um, she's really like, I, I feel for her a lot um, in a way that I, I haven't really for other characters. Um, but also Commander Oleon Summercut, he's he's a minor character in Team Hound. Um, and he's, he, you know, he, of course, he's a crucial part of the story, but he's not huge. But there's something about him, even though he doesn't really have too much page time, where I'm just like, I feel like I know him. I feel like I could have him. He is Idris Elba in my head. 100% he is Idris Elba. Like, <laughs> that is who I see. I just trust him in my life. And then... I'm trying to think least least favorite. Um, well, also well, another favorite is Ludovicus, Ludacris. And the arc that we get to see a little bit of so far is really, I really am enjoying it. And what's going to happen in Wow is I'm, I'm, like, I'm very, um, been very hard to read. Uh, <laughs> and then um, there's also a character in Unmap, who is probably my least favorite. And he's, he's my least favorite because I feel like I was able to write him in a way that even made like me hate him. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm really happy with how he turned out. Um, I, I only want to tell you his name just in case. But, um, I genuinely hate him so much. So maybe going back to what I said before, I don't hate anybody. No, I think I actually do. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited for On Mass to come out. Uh it's it's coming out April twenty third, right? April twenty third, yep. Awesome. I'm so excited because when I was reading like when we were introduced to Miles originally, I became obsessed with him and I was like, Where is this going? How is this character gonna play out? Because you just could feel from the moment he entered the story that there was going to be something about Miles. And it's it, you know, in the journey we go on with him and then into Bones of 
benevolence. Did I say it right this time, Kristen? I'm from the Midwest <laughs> and I can't pronounce vowels correctly. And now I have a, I, <laughs> so I'm always like, am I saying it right? Because Kristen made fun of me one time, but I, <laughs> and it really stuck with her, but it worked because she's never said it wrong. <laughs> Don't jinx me. But, um, I'm so excited to hear his story, especially after everything we learned in, you know, in the Bones of Benevolence. And so I am, I'm just so pumped for, for all of this. I, I really fell in deep with your stories and I'm so, so grateful that you said, we're doing this, we're self-publishing it, we're getting out there. Um, I actually have both my copies, print copies of the books back there, and I actually have both my, um, that Mama e-reader as well because I'm just like, this is something that I want to have all the way till the end. So super pumped. Yeah. To me, I think I think Unmasked is, uh, you, know, you know, without spoiling too much, I mean, you guys already you know, know if you've read T-Bone, but... Um, not everybody was super happy at the end, or at the end of T-Bob, um, but I think that they will be, they will understand more when they read this. Um, and I think I've gotten really, really good feedback from Unmasked. And I think, I don't want to say it's my favorite one that I've written so far, but it's, because I feel like it's tied with, with T-Bob. Um, mm-hmm. I'm genuinely so happy for the story. Um, I'm so happy for the story and it's, yeah, I think it's, I was excited. Yes. We're excited too. <laughs> Super excited. So, Lauren, where can people find you in person this year? Because you're doing quite a few events, and I will have Lauren's website linked below with her events page for you guys to be able to uh, have this information at the ready because you're doing quite a few uh, in person appearances. Yes, yeah. So my my um, next one coming up is a polycon. Um, so stoked for that! I'm stoked for all of them. Just but I'm I'm so super excited for a polycon. So that one is April 23rd through the 20. Or no, sorry, April 24th through the 20. That is six, I think. Um, you know, because I'm not who's on the 23rd, and then I leave the 20. So, uh, a polycon is in late April, um, Imaginarium, which I'm just, just excited. Uh, that one is June 6th and 7th. Both of those are in DC. Um, a polycon is at the Gaylord National Harbor. And then Imaginarium is that is going to be at the University of DC. Um, much of that is Romanticicon in Orlando. Pumped, so pumped. That one's going to have a ball, like a, a um, masquerade ball, but it's going to be fantasy ball um that one is october 3rd through the 5th and then um the one that i don't have on my website just yet is dance of the dragon that is an alexia event and that is in orlando as well that's november 22nd through 24th and i believe that one is also a fantasy ball um a lot of good stuff coming up this year i am pumped uh because all of these events are ones that i would want to go to as a, as a reader so um the fact that i get to sign Besides some of these, these people that are going to, like, you know, the authors that I'm going to be signing, that was just, my mind is blown. Yeah, I was actually looking at Imaginarium this year and was like, I have a, we have a pretty bu- busy job. And so um, I was like, I don't think we can make it happen because of the timing and stuff like that. And our schedules can be really unknown. And so... I'm so excited you're going there. I hope to actually get there uh, next year. It would be amazing. I want to do some conventions next year because I've actually never been. So I just, uh, I'm excited for you. It, and you're right. A lot of the authors that you're signing with, it, it's out of this world. And I can't imagine. And feel like if I was in your shoes, I'd be having a complete out-of-body experience the entire time. Oh, dude. It is. So like we're in, you know, I'm in like an Apollycon author. Facebook group where we can ask questions and it's it's a good amount of assistance there are some um that are in there there are some of the you know authors are there too and someone who asked the questions how many you know how many books are you guys planning on bringing and this and that and my answer and then I looked and it was Carissa Broadbent who had asked the question and I was like how am, how am I and then Raven Kennedy just posting in there like oh what what are you doing for this what you, and I'm like how am I supposed to act around you she's like wow like what so 
um, and at, at a polycon, I, you know, my table's here and then Chris of Broadway's table is literally like diagonal to me and we're literally reading her book right now in my book club. Um, which one? My book club does not know that I'm an author yet. Uh, we're reading Serpent in the Wings of Night. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm like trying to figure out a way that I can segue up in my book club. Like, hey, also I'm an author and I'm going to be right next to her. <laughs> they don't know yet. Um, <laughs> and it's stressing me out. But um, they're going to find out at some point. <laughs> Do you want me to but, cut this portion out so that it's not? <laughs> whatever. I, we're meeting on we're meeting on April 6th. I'm like, it's going to have to come out at season 20 because <laughs> it's just going to be, I don't know. Um, but, but they're, they're, they're so awesome. And I'm, I'm very excited to be discussing this book because I am very passionate about Serpent and the Wings of Night. Um, but yeah, so it's wild because like, I'm just sitting here and then, you know, there's all these, yeah, I mean, just amazing authors, like all, all around. Like, so we, you know, we get our, our room assignments and I'm like, I'm in the same room as, as Lee Raven Kennedy's in my no, Raven Kennedy might have her own. E either way, like Rebecca Yaros and and like how, oh, like literally how. So I, the imposter syndrome is like creeping up, and I'm trying to like. You belong down, there. Also, like, you thank you belong also. there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So that's it's a it is really a like I have to remind myself to breathe like i don't know how i'm supposed to walk into this room and be like yes yeah, hello i am one of you i also wrote a book like <laughs> we you and i are kind of the same and not <laughs> it's so fun though right like you have two books your third one coming out walk up to an author that has 15 and be like we're the same <laughs> yeah i have this honestly like experience <laughs> It is, it is wild to me. I'm, I'm, my, I think one of the people I'm most excited to meet out of Polycon is Danielle L. Jensen. Um, Bridge Kingdom is like in my like uh, three to five, maybe I tell you the three um, series. And I just like, I'm just, I'm honored. I am terrified. I'm, I'm so just thrilled that I've even get to be among this like caliber of, of, you know, of professional crazy. You know how I said it's I'm a crier? <laughs> Yeah, it's not crazy to us. I'm so happy for you that I just have like tears in my eyes. I told you I was a crier. I was like, oh, I was trying to ignore them. Oh my, I was afraid I cried last night when I finished. I'm like, I'm still trying to get the formatting exactly right. And on math that I, I finished it. And I was like, really? Like, oh, the same thing. Like, what? I've had six times a day. Sorry, right there with you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like, okay, I can't read the screen. I actually have to call myself out and fix my face. <laughs> I can't act like nothing's happening right now. <laughs> will the War of Wings, which will be the third and final installment, because on mass is a um, a novella that happens between the first two, is the War of Wings going to be the final? uh book in the series so it'll be the third like it'll be the final core book that's what i've been calling them um since, okay uh, on math technically not even on math is technically not even a novella anymore it's, it's a novel um i mean like definition but um i am planning on doing a prequel that will be more of the story of katia and Raydros, um okay. keepers of the saint so that one i don't have any like set solid plan for that yet i think i would like to get um another series up and running which i'm very for. um before i i do that kind of kind of give give it a rest and let it let the story like really unfold in my mind um but yeah so it'll be by the end of it all it'll be the three core books um the spinoff novel and then the the prequel which i am planning just one book for the prequel but never say never because i might i don't know i have a lot to say and it might not fit in one book so well, I'm here for all of it, so pumps. <laughs> and so you do have some future projects in mind then. So you're like already kind of the gears are turning and you're ready to pivot a little bit with your stories. Yes, I'm very, I, I Benevolence and Blood will forever, you know, hold hold my heart. Um, I'm also, but I've, I've learned so much throughout the process. Um, and I, I don't want to say that there's things that I would do differently with Benevolence and Blood um, in terms of the story. But um, I've learned a lot about like, you know, outlining and planning and um, just making it a little bit easier on myself to make sure that everything comes full circle. Um, and that's something that I'm really excited to implement in this in this next 
um, theory. So, and I haven't, I haven't decided just yet if I want to pursue, you know, traditional publishing or um, do self-publish again uh, for that one. But it does, that will be a trilogy, um, at least, pro probably a trilogy. It might be, you never know. Um, that will be a trilogy and it is involving um, the Grim Reaper and Ooh. his counterpart, the, the, basically like the, the overseer of life or like the god of life. Um, so, yeah. That's I'm very, very exciting. exciting. Yes. I, uh, again, I like like the, I don't want to say it's dark, but like I like the stuff around like the darkness of like mythologies and folklores and stuff like that. So like one of the series that I actually have that I got for Christmas uh, is the Four Horsemen series. And I haven't started it. It's sitting over there. It haunts me every day. Um, but I cannot wait to read that because I just know I'm going to It's. I just know in my heart that it's going to be one of those stories where I, it's like done with one book, pick up the other one right away type of thing, which yeah. is why I haven't started it because I have some other things I need to get through or I want to get finish and get through first. But uh, I will very much be looking forward to your next series. Um Especially after hearing that, <laughs> yeah, I'm there. I'm I'm really excited. Yeah, like I have um, I have more of this, this work now that I know that I'm doing a little bit more than I did before. I have yeah more of the the outline, the the overall like goal, you know, going into it that I'll be leading up to, which I didn't necessarily have too much with um, when I started the Sin of State. Kind of had the final along the way, um, but this one, yeah, I'm I'm very much looking looking forward to this. Um, and and I think I think a lot of the appeal with like the mythology and stuff like you said is trying to make sense of things in you know life that we all deal with that are scary like you know like the ultimate thing that happens to everybody you know is death not to get super dark but I feel like a lot of times these books like they seek to make sense of of something that you know is a bit scary is a bit unknown um and I feel like that that is something like subconsciously that ended up coming out with uh, with T-Sauce is like the reckoning the the um or the reconciliation of that of that fact and like how that plays into day to day life. Well, you're really good at writing that, so um, <laughs> it, I can't wait to see what you do next. How how bad you hurt my feelings and string me along <laughs> on the next one too. So <laughs> I'm super ready. <laughs> Stay tuned. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so now that you have a bunch of books published, or you have two absolutely beloved books published, you have your third one, Unmasked, coming out on April 23rd, uh, and then plans for another another book and another series have you googled yourself and found anything shocking or or do you google yourselves now every once in a while i'm not on it's more so the reason i google myself is to save my book cover if i'm like planning to open up permission or like we got a podcast because i can never you know the cine states cover in my sleeping photo albums and i am just going to google me um so i haven't really found anything no i no, but i mean i and i try really hard not to look at my um reviews anymore and especially after t-bob because and i knew that the ones after t-bob were going to be mixed because of a choice that was made by a main character in terms of another person um if you know what i'm talking about uh but but yeah no i haven't i haven't found anything but i also have not because i know if i start to look and if i find something i'm gonna spiral smart yes very smart i don't know if media was like lauren m leisure net worth eight million dollars <laughs> that would be nice that would be new to me um i would i yeah that would that would be great but um no there haven't been any i think what would be really funny though is if i like one day googled my name um First off, though, Googling my name does actually bring up me, which is pretty cool because it didn't for a while. You know, I'd Google Lauren and usually we do Lauren and Laser, but for Lauren Laser, whatever, and it would be, you know, and then a bunch of them are 300 on Facebook, whatever. Um, does bring up me now. So, like, it's me in it. 
Uh, <laughs> but I think it would be really cool if I were to get to a point where like, you know, if you type in like Ryan Gosling, you get like Ryan Gosling fight, Ryan Gosling wife, Ryan Gosling like childhood or like hometown. Like that would be cool if I'm like, people want to know that much about me that they want to know about like my husband or like, you know, um, I feel like then I'd be like, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't want people to know it all, but like, I feel like I want people to want to know it all. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> so again, link down below is going to be Lauren's website where you can find her in person this year if you're attending some different events. She has her series, the Benevolence and Blood series with the Sin of Saints, the Bones of Benevolence, soon to be released in April on the 23rd on Mass. And then to be announced, we have the install the third installment which is the war of wings which i'm extremely excited for because the bones of benevolence has left off on an epic cliffhanger that had me going why are there not more pages right now so very excited very happy to hear about miles story and on mass as well really excited to meet your new characters um lauren is there anything that you would like the people to know Thank you for making this like a, a thing. Uh, I mean, it's always been my dream to to create for a living, and the fact that I I get to do it, the fact that it happened so quickly, um, on the end, just like I, I like pinch myself every single day, and it still feels crazy when I like meet somebody and they say, well, "What do you do?" And I'm you know, and they're like, "Well, you know, thank you to everybody who has made that possible because." I'll never, I don't think I'll ever get over it. We'll never, ever, ever get over it. Um, because it's just, it doesn't, doesn't make sense that that is what's happening in my life, but I'm so, so incredibly grateful that I could try to. So, just no talking before I do. Perfect. Yes. So, thank you for sticking with us through this episode today and this interview with Lauren. And until next time, keep reading. <laughs>